Okay, well, welcome back to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I'm your host, Chris Abercrombie, and with me is our finalist, Andrew Schull. Uh, tonight's final question for a million dollars is, who runs the world? Is it A, God, B, Satan, C, money, or D, girls? Mm. Well, that's tough. I wonder if I can phone a friend. Mm. You can phone your Bible if you need to. Oh. Yeah, it's tough. We, God is in control. God is ultimately and finally in control. Uh, Christianity is not a religion of many gods or of, of good um, versus evil in the sense that it's dualistic, in the sense that, that, there's a, you know, that Satan and God are rivals in power. They're not. God is in control. God is the authority, and Satan is under his leadership. Um, and what Satan is able to do, which is awful, God permits uh, for purposes that are beyond our ability to comprehend, but yet they're God's good purposes. And God is constantly at work to bring good out of evil. So in an ultimate sense, yes, God is in control. We can trust him. We can commit ourselves fully to him. Um, we can rely on God who holds us in the palm of his hand and no one is greater that can snatch us out of his hand. Uh, Jesus tells us in John chapter 10. But it is more complicated than we like to think about it mm -hmm. because we have an enemy who is out to kill and steal and to destroy and God who is sovereign in his sovereignty allows us free will. And we don't always make the right decisions. And that brings incredible pain and suffering into the world. Um, and so while God is sovereign, in his sovereignty, he allows for evil um, in satanic form and evil in our hearts. Um, because if God were to destroy all the evil in the world, he would take us out too. So, option A, final answer? Uh, it's got to be God, yeah. yeah. Well, the answer we were looking for is girls. Uh, oh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week with another episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh, now back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs>things that I noticed, we were doing a Bible study in John's epistles this past Sunday. So one of the verses that we covered in our Bible study um, would be 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, which says, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. And at the time, we had a little bit of an adverse reaction. Well, a good, good discussion mm -hmm. um, because we we believe sincerely that God is in control. Mm -hmm. And yet this verse tells us that Satan rules the world. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the only verse that says that. Uh, Jesus calls Satan the prince of this world, the ruler of this world. Uh, when Jesus was tempted, uh, Satan offers him all the kingdoms of this world mm -hmm. if he'll just bow down. And of course, Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy and says, you know, we should worship God alone. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, if the kingdoms weren't Satan's to offer, uh, that kind of would have not really been a real temptation. And the temptations that, that Jesus faced were very real. Yeah. Uh, they were temptations to have a, to be a Messiah without a cross, without the suffering, without all that he had to go through in order for us to be saved. Mm -hmm. um, so those were powerful temptations. And so Satan is very powerful, but he's not God. Yeah. And he's not on the level of God. Um, he is limited by God. God allows Satan. And Jesus came to destroy the work of Satan. So we see Jesus healing and setting people free from, from the infirmities that Satan has placed on them. And even his resurrection from the dead is a huge blow to Satan. And, of course, uh, Romans, Paul reminds us of that verse in Genesis that, that one day Jesus will crush Satan's head. Uh, 
this type of subject really interests me because it's something where I don't know if it's a like a Christian Mandela effect where over time mm-hmm. we just kind of assumed or maybe we didn't want to think that the evil one is actually ruling the world at the moment. Um, I mean, that, that can lead to some dark areas if you think about yeah. it. But it's it's interesting because it kind of gives the Bible a bit of a chance to defend itself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything that happens is not the express will of God. Mm-hmm. If a preschooler gets run over by a car, I mean, God did not say, ooh, I, you know, this is how I want this to happen. Yeah. We live in a broken, sinful world where absolutely horrible things happen. Mm-hmm. Yet, we have a God who brings good out of evil and a God who is constantly at work. And there are times when God intervenes. And and I think we would be astonished and amazed to know how many times God intervenes. Yeah. Um, because I think his angels are at work and we don't notice them or see them. But uh, there's no telling how many times today we've been saved from things that, that God intervened to help us with. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there's a mystery there. You know, there's a story in the book of Acts where um, Peter and James who were both in Jesus' inner circle. You know, Jesus often pulls aside Peter, James, and John. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both in prison. Herod has James beheaded. God does not intervene. Mm-hmm. Angels are sent to rescue Peter. So did God love James more than he loved Peter? Did yeah. God love Peter more than he loved James? Mm-hmm. Did, was he just kind of slow to realize what was going on? No, he wasn't slow. God mm-hmm. is not slow. Um, so this was part of God's will and purpose that he would use in an even greater way than we can imagine. Mm-hmm. And so it's very confusing for us because we're all about comfort and we're all about health and mm-hmm. we're all about prosperity. Mm-hmm. And perhaps those aren't God's goals for us. Perhaps his goal is to conform us into the image of his son. Mm -hmm. And sometimes trouble and hardship can be used to do that. And really this kind of, I would say, disproves the whole health and wealth gospel. Oh, yeah. Uh, But it's just, you know, we we like to believe that God is in control of the world, which He he is. It's just maybe not in the way that we think. Yes, it's much more complicated than our minds can comprehend, Mm -hmm. and it's much more complicated than we like to think, Um, because it it doesn't bring us any comfort to know that Satan is a roaring lion devouring, and that he is stealing and killing, and that he is the ruler of this world, as Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, refers to him, Mm -hmm. and that evil sometimes wins. Mm -hmm. Now, it won't ultimately win. Yeah. Uh, but you have all these verses in the Bible, like put on the full armor of Christ. Mm-hmm. You're, the battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And don't be, you know, blind to Satan's schemes. So there is a real enemy. You know, if we were on a SWAT team, we would not go into action without the protective gear. If you're playing football, you know, pads, helmets, they're required. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are a Christian, the armor of God is essential. I mean, it's not just something that's nice to wear and or impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we have an enemy. Mm-hmm. We're in a war. Mm-hmm. This kind of creates an interesting scenario where, you know, we would think that God controls the world kind of in our own view of things, and yet the Bible tells us something different. Yeah. But in different points of the Bible, it kind of hints at God being in control of things, so it kind of creates this scenario where... Is the Bible contradicting itself? It really isn't. God is sovereign. Mm-hmm. God is in control, ultimately, mm-hmm. finally. But in God's sovereignty, he allows Satan to work, and he allows for our free will. Mm-hmm. And the Bible clearly teaches um, that God knows. He is omniscient. He's not limited by time and space. Um, so he knows exactly what we're going to do. And yet somehow... There truly is free will. Hmm. Um, We have choices and we have responsibility for the choices that we make Mm -hmm. and are held accountable for the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think either of those is false. I think we really do have free will and I think God really is sovereign. Mm -hmm. Now exactly how you can work that out, that's above our 
capacity. Yeah. But for me, that's comforting because that points to a God who is much, much bigger than my mind can comprehend. Mm. Um, he's not a God I've made in my own image. Mm-hmm. He's a God who is bigger than my ability to imagine or think through. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'll pull out a couple of instances here where it kind of hints that maybe the Bible's contradicting itself, and then we'll kind of take a look at it and okay. say, you know, well, this, is, this is why it says this okay. type of thing. Um, in, in Genesis, All right. um, God gives mankind dominion over yes. the earth. Yes. He gives... A, Responsibility. Yeah. Stewardship. Yeah. And so if he gives mankind, if he lets mankind rule over the earth... Mm-hmm. How are there two rulers here? Yeah, that one's not that hard. We'll, yeah. we, we, can, we can dissect that one pretty good. Um, God shares his creative power with mankind. Mm. He places man in a beautiful garden. And um, not only is man told to be fruitful and multiply, but he shares in God's... In, he, he, Adam and Eve become gardeners. Mm. Um, they share in cultivating life. Uh, it's an incredibly positive image. Mm-hmm. But... Of the probably thousands of trees God placed in the garden, there was one that he told them not to eat from. Mm-hmm. And I don't think this was a magical tree. I don't think uh, when they took their first bite, you know, the, the world changed because of the tree itself, because of the fruit. It, yeah. it, in a Disney cartoon, yeah. you know, like Snow White or that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, I think it's their choice. God told them not to eat from it, mm-hmm. and they did. Mm-hmm. So they were redefining good and evil for themselves. They were saying, God, I don't trust you. God, I don't love you. Mm-hmm. God, I don't think you know what's best for me. I think I know what's best for me. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've been doing ever since. So even though we were given stewardship and dominion over the earth, um, after we made that decision, the earth that had been friendly, the earth that had been, you know, there was no um, predation, um, you know, you could pet the lions and the tigers and the bears, mm-hmm. but now the ground has thorns and thistles and we earn our living by the sweat of our brow and there's pain in the miracle of childbirth and, and the, the nature has become hostile. Mm-hmm. So everything changes in those moments. We open the door for Satan. Yeah. Uh, when I was growing up, there was a comedian named Flip Wilson and one of his taglines was the devil made me do it. Hmm. Well, it's, it was funny, mm-hmm. but the devil doesn't make us do things. We choose to do things. Mm-hmm. We choose to give in to the devil's schemes. Mm-hmm. We choose to enslave ourselves, um, and then we're stuck. We lose that freedom of choice through sin mm-hmm. um, because then we get to the point where we can't. there's not a choice anymore. So Jesus frees us. Sin enslaves us. This is a bit of a off-subject thing, but it kind of made me think of, you know, we have a growing population of, I'm not sure what the exact term is, but I guess it's like Satanists mm. or Luciferians. I'm not mm. sure what the what their actual term is. Yeah. At one time, Wicca was one of the fastest growing religions in the United States. I yeah. don't know if it still is or not, but yeah. it was at one point. Yeah. Um, and it, I guess to them... They, because as far as the Bible's concerned, it says Satan rules the rules the earth, and so it's kind of one of those things where, since the Bible says it's true, it's like it's kind of a short term mindset though, Um, because it's like, oh well, yeah, it's like this is going to be great for now. Yeah, and this is one of Satan's ploys Mm -hmm. too—truth mixed with falsehood. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's tempting Eve. Um, he subtly implies that she can't trust God. Mm-hmm. Did God really say? He starts out one of the sentences. Mm-hmm. And, and that's sort of the, the same deal. Yes, yeah. Satan has authority and dominion, but Jesus has all authority yeah. and all yeah. dominion. Um, and, and Satan's only allowed to do uh, what God permits. Yeah. Let's move on to another example here. There is a verse in, I've got it here, Uh, Matthew 28, verse 18, Mm. um, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Yes. So here we have another potential example of where the Bible can be contradicting itself. We know it's not true, 
because Jesus has a different timeline <laughs> than right. Satan does. Right. Uh, because we know, like in Revelation, it, or we're bringing Revelation back into it, we see where Jesus assumes authority then. Yes, the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, powerful, beautiful verse in Revelation that Handel sets to music. Mm-hmm. So we see that a, a lot of people would just stop and say, hey, well, wait a minute. It, it, Jesus said that all authority was his. Obviously, something's, yeah. someone's wrong here. One way to think about that is battles versus the war. Hmm. Um, Jesus' death and resurrection, he wins the war. Mm-hmm. And all authority is his. Um, but there are battles still being fought. And, and even though what Jesus did on the cross saves us from the penalty of sin, and it allows us here and now to be saved from the power of sin, um, there's another part of salvation that's coming, and that's to be saved from the presence of sin. And so Revelation talks about the defeat of death itself as well as Satan. Mm. Um, and so um, Jesus does have all authority, but just as the Father is ultimately in control, um, Jesus is um, at work to bring good out of evil, to redeem the work of Satan, mm-hmm. to destroy the work of Satan, is the yeah. way John words it. Yeah, and even we can we can kind of see the differences between the battle and the war because as far as Satan's concerned, when Jesus was crucified, mm-hmm. he thought he won. Yes. And yet we see, like, well, I mean, yeah, you might have won that battle, but then we see Jesus winning the war, right? Ultimately, right. Uh, so it's it's just interesting to see how, again, the timelines are different. Yeah, and and even though right here, right now, there's pain, there's suffering, there's mm-hmm. death, there's grief, there's loss, um, we know that one day there will be no more tears. One day there'll be no more grief. No, one day there'll be no more pain or, or death or any of those things. That God Himself will wipe every tear from our eyes. So mm-hmm. we know that that the evil that we experience here is temporary. Mm-hmm. And that God is ultimately victorious over it. And in the midst of the things we face here and now, God is with us. Mm-hmm. And that's a, a, a powerful thing, too. Um, you know, in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image. Mm-hmm. Um, God had the power to make them miraculously disappear or you yeah, know, to save them in them some other else. way. Mm-hmm. But... They get thrown into a fiery furnace, but God is there with them in the fiery furnace. Mm-hmm. And I really think that's the model that, that happens most often. We go through trouble. We go through problems, but God has promised never to leave us, to never forsake us, and he is right there with us. Mm-hmm. The, the biblical worldview really has the best answer to the problem of evil and suffering. Um, if you are an evolutionist, all you've got is survival of the fittest, and when you don't survive, it's just tough luck. Yeah, yeah. But for a Christian, there's a God who is right there with us in the midst of our trouble, and He will ultimately one day defeat that. And and the fact that Jesus takes our trouble upon Himself on the cross, wow, that is life changing. Mm-hmm. Let me bring up another question then. Um, in Romans, Paul tells the Church of Rome that they are to be, I'm pulling this out of context, okay. that they are to be subject to governing governing authorities. Yes. And if we see that Satan rules the world, mm-hmm. then by logic, it tells me that we are subject to Satan's rule on earth. Hmm. Boy, that's tough. Uh, yes, that is what Paul writes. Peter writes a very similar thing tells us to pray for those who are placed in authority over us. Mm. Tells us that there would be no authority outside of God. Mm. That God has allowed that authority to be in our lives. Mm -hmm. So to disobey that authority is to disobey God. Mm -hmm. Um, But think about the government. I mean, we would like to say, okay, well, if the government's kind and generous and loving and has the best interests of the people at heart, of course we need to be loyal, faithful citizens. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the government Paul was writing about or Peter they were writing about Rome. Yeah, they were writing about Nero. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, think about <laughs> our tax dollars get spent on all kinds of crazy, <laughs> awful things, and people's pockets get lined all the time. Mm. 
but that's nothing compared to ancient Rome. Yeah. I mean, their tax dollars were spent on um, all manner of things. Mm -hmm. It's just, and, and even in another part, he's telling us that we need to be in the world and yet not of it. Mm -hmm. So whereas we are subject to Satan's influence on earth, we are still called to not be of the world. Right. Just right. be in it. And we've been sent to the world. We're mm -hmm. to be salt. We're to be light. We're to be agents of transformation. And in that very prayer, you were, were quoting parts of John chapter 17, which is Jesus' prayer on the night before he's crucified. Um, he will say very plainly, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world. My prayer is that you protect them mm. in the world. Uh, I have another verse here in 2 Corinthians. Hmm. Uh, this is 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 in the ESV. Um, it says, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds mm. of the unbelievers yes. to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Wow. And that's really strong language that Paul uses there. Mm -hmm. um, God of this world. Mm -hmm. And he's not talking about our Heavenly Father. There. Yeah, that is, that is a lowercase g. Yeah. So we've always kind of just assumed that God is ruler of the world. I mean, he has the and, whole world in his hands. And he is. Yeah, yeah. It's just here we kind of have a bit of reality yeah. added in. Yeah. Because a lot of people like to just kind of skip some parts of Scripture where it's like, okay, well, we don't really want to talk about the bad stuff. Right. We just want to talk about the good stuff. Right. And here we, like, I like this, the type of verses like we looked at in First John because it kind of just brings some reality back in. Right. right. Because it's like, uh, believe it or not, we are in a spiritual war right now. We are. And, I mean, whether you choose to believe it or not, <laughs> right. Right. whether you choose to look or look away. And, and that goes against... Um, we like a casual Christianity. Mm. We like one that doesn't require much of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to, you know, be comfortable, and um, it's our Christianity is very consumer oriented. You know, I, I like this. I don't like that. I like the music here, but I like the preaching over here. I like mm. this activity they're doing, but I don't really like what they're doing over there. So we pick and choose, and it's like a grocery store type experience for us. Uh, we're very, very consumer oriented um, that way. I guess maybe maybe another reason why people struggle with this idea so much is because you see in a lot of the Psalms where David assumed, um, he mentions how the kingdoms are the Lord's and he rules over the nations. Mm -hmm. He says that in a multiple different ways. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of, he's not wrong. No, David's exactly right in mm -hmm. the Psalms. The Lord ultimately rules over the nations. Yeah. It's just, I think a lot of people would also think that God just has a hands-off version of the world. Oh, no. No, no, no. Jesus tells us that he knows when a sparrow falls from the ground. Hmm. Uh, he knows how many hairs we have on our head. Uh, God is not distant. He's not remote. Uh, he is intimately involved in the details of our lives. But his ways are higher than our ways. Mm. And his ways truly are past understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I keep going back to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was an evil man. Um, he destroyed the temple that Solomon built. He took God's, he destroyed a lot of, killed a lot of God's people. He took many others into captivity. Um, he committed horrible atrocities mm. by any definition of the world. Mm -hmm. And yet, God used him. So Nebuchadnezzar saw himself as the king of the world, and yet God, who is who has greater authority than Nebuchadnezzar, um, uses what Nebuchadnezzar does to accomplish his will and his purpose. Hmm. And and that really is above our ability to reason out entirely. Yeah. God is sovereign. And yet there's evil in this world. What you're saying is that God allows Satan to rule the world to um, kind of accentuate what God does? Like, 
Well, yes, evil. You know, when we see evil, we we recognize goodness. When we see goodness, we recognize evil. I mm-hmm. mean that, that you that that part is important. Mm-hmm. Um, God wants us to have a choice. Um, free will is very very important um, for us to choose to love God. Means that we could choose not to love God. Mm. Um, God has created the world in such a way that if we want to ignore Him and pretend He doesn't exist and pretend that you know we have no responsibility toward God or no um, relationship, we can do that, and we can spend eternity doing that. Yeah, God does not force Himself on any of us, but if we will seek Him. We will find him. Mm-hmm. So he's not hiding either, but he allows us that choice. Mm-hmm. I guess another thought here is that have you ever have you seen the Dark Knight movies? Mm-hmm. In one of the Dark Knight movies, the Joker basically tells Batman, "You're nothing without me." Yes, like because you like it's kind of the yin and yang, right? Right. And so it, is that. I don't want to say that's a reason why Satan is allowed to exist. Yeah, um, that may be helpful as long as you realize that that um, Satan's not in God's league. Yeah, yeah. And as long as you realize that that Satan is a minor player in comparison to God. Mm-hmm. So, really, the answer to uh, that bit of scripture in First John mm-hmm. is that we don't need to overlook it. Right. We need to know that there is a war going on right now and that even though Satan may have dominion now, that's not the end game. Right. And he's been defeated. He's already been defeated Mm -hmm. by the cross and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, uh, there will be a tremendous conflict between good and evil. Uh, We think of it as the Battle of Armageddon, uh, Revelation chapter 19. And... It's just you know really interesting the way John writes that tells the story because basically Jesus shows up and the battle's over. Mm-hmm. I mean, all he has to do is appear, and all the forces of evil in the entire world universe are defeated. Jesus is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is victorious. When we struggle with the question of God is in control. I think an issue is, can we trust him? Can we trust him with our day-to-day lives? Can we trust him with eternity? Can we trust him with, with, um, you know, the, the, how do we make sense of the terrible things that happen? How do we make sense of a global pandemic? How do we make sense when tragic things happen to children? How do we make sense when, when, um, when there is just incredible sickness and suffering? Um, and, and so ultimately there, we're struggling with the problem of evil and the problem of suffering. Mm-hmm. But God is with us in those things. He will one day defeat those things entirely. He'll wipe every tear from our eyes. Um, God is greater than life and death, greater than sickness and suffering, greater than any problem that we will face, greater than our enemy who seeks to do us harm. Like as the verse says, I mean, we are to take heart because he has overcome the world. Yeah, that's an excellent verse. That's uh, John 16, 33, I think, where it says, um, in this world you will have trouble, mm-hmm. but be of good cheer. Take heart. Uh, Tharseo, mm-hmm. I have overcome the world. So we can trust God, and we can realize that ultimately and finally he is in control, but we can't let our guard down either. Mm. You know, in war movies, um, and I've seen this in a bunch of movies, but the soldier will take his helmet off, and that's the very moment when mm-hmm. a bullet comes and takes him out. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, why, why, why did you take? Don't take your helmet <laughs> off. Uh, we need the spiritual armor that God provides. Mm-hmm. We need time in His Word. We need time in prayer. We are not equipped to face the evil of this world without God. Mm. But God has given us everything we need mm-hmm. to follow Him and to trust Him. And, and he provides for us. And even if you look, going along with that example, if you look at any scary movie, who's the one that always gets taken out first? It's the one who walks away first, yes. who, walks, who leaves the group first. Yes. So we need each other. Yes. And that's just another tool that God has given us. Right. 
think about the Roman soldiers and the way they use their shields as almost like a turtle. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, to, to cover the top and the sides and, mm-hmm. and every part. And that's possible when you've got interlocking shields. And that, that really is what it means to be part of a family of faith, the army of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And difficult times, one of the good outcomes that come from good, difficult times is that we learn to trust God more. Hmm. Um, we put our faith in ourselves. We like to be independent. Yeah. But when trouble comes, like a little child running to his parents, we realize just how much we need God. Yeah. Uh, it's like what the song says. It's like, well, he's the God of the mountain and he's the God of the valley. Yeah. So we learn a lot during difficult times. Mm. Um, and, and God can take the difficult things that happen and use them to shape us and to mold us so that we become more like his son, Jesus Christ. And that, that is God's goal for us, not our comfort, mm. not our ability to just take it easy, mm. which is what we like, mm-hmm. but rather he is helping us to become more like Jesus. And it should not surprise us that that's a painful process at times. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, Mm. then find a really good chair and get comfortable. Yep. No, he said, if you really (laughs) want to be my disciple, take up your cross daily. Mm -hmm. Follow me. If if it was meant to be easy, everyone would do it. But yet Jesus says, the road is narrow. Yeah. And it requires a lot of trust, a lot mm -hmm. of faith. And it requires that we live in God's grace, Uh, his grace for us and his grace for others that we that we get to be part of extending that grace, mm-hmm. love, mercy, forgiveness, um, to make a difference in this evil world by being salt, by being light, mm-hmm. um, by responding to hatred with love, um, to conflict with peace, mm-hmm. to have a joy that's greater than this world's circumstances mm-hmm. because it's it's based on something that's real. And we see examples of. You know, well, where, where, where do you need light most? Yes, it's in the dark. <laughs> you, put, you put light where light is needed. Yeah, and and there are often times where God strategically places us, um, and and that's important to realize um, because we may get irritated by somebody's profanity or by you know something else that's going on mm-hmm. in the workplace or some other place, but but God has placed us there to make a difference. He tells us if salt loses its saltiness, it's not good for much. Yeah. Um, he has placed us where we can be useful mm-hmm. and where we can join in what he's doing. Um, and he taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. So we're part of that prayer. And that even brings up an interesting perspective because if we know that the world is ruled by the evil one, and yet we are placed here to be the light, to be yes. the salt, I mean that's just that's just a whole different perspective on life. Because it's like, hey, well, I'm actually here because I'm supposed to do something. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm supposed to. There's mission. Yeah. Because again, you don't. You don't cover a lamp. I mean, you don't cover light bulbs. I mean, right. we have a bunch of light bulbs in here, and they're, they're not covered up because we need the light, right? Right. Same thing. Same thing applies. This is like the world needs the light that we have. Yes, desperately. Mm-hmm. And so we can't be afraid to reach out. We can't be right. afraid to be the light because right. we know that God has equipped us to do it. I yes. mean, he won't. The whole thing is like God won't send you into a scenario that you're not prepared for or that he won't provide for you in that scenario. He always gives us a way out of temptation. Mm -hmm. And so Paul's able to write things like, um, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Mm. So there's a lot involved with that question of who's in control. Mm -hmm. God is. Um, But we're in a war. Yeah. You've been listening to Deep Dive for Life. Thank you so much for tuning in to our show this week. We'll be back next week with another bit of scripture to dive into. Remember to reach out to us at deepdiveforlife at gmail.com with any questions you may have for us to cover in the show. Thanks again, and remember to keep diving, friends. Mm-hmm.
Thank you.